questions and answers to my questions. Thank you, Eric. It's always a pleasure to uh, see progress coming out of your lab. So you all feel encouraged when you achieve some uh, new results. Well, I have a question. When you go to um, measuring yield from uh, decaborin, are you limited only to measuring neutrons or do you have some other way of measuring yield? Well, yes, there are two. There is another mes method, but it won't work on all shots, only when we get to very high temperatures. The tail end of the distribution produces another secondary reaction, which is that you can get the production of carbon-11. Now, carbon-11, to a certain extent, is a pain in the neck because it decays in 20 minutes, which means it's highly radioactive. That is the motivation we have to make the entire operation of the X room remote, so we wouldn't have to enter the X room after a shot while the carbon-11 is still decaying. So if we start producing the carbon-11, then we can measure the decay of the carbon-11 with a standard gamma ray detector. Before we get to that point, we think the neutrons are really the only way, because if we try to put a detector for the alpha particles inside the vacuum chamber, we just don't think it will survive. The energy levels are too uh, strong and will just fry any detector that we could conceive of. So that's why we haven't tried to detect the alphas directly. Now, when we get to very high yields, we would be able to directly detect the burning of the fuel uh, by our time of flight measurements of the ion beam, because the ion beam, the mix between the hydrogen and boron and helium would be able would would change. We can measure that in two ways: one with the time of flight for the beam itself, and a more sensitive measurement is the beam creates gamma rays when it hits the steel plate at the bottom of the drift tube. And the efficiency of the conversion of the energy into gamma rays depends on the um, Z of the beam. So since what we will get is that the three alpha particles will produce a different amount of gamma rays than the hydrogen and boron. So we'd be able to measure that once we actually get burn up that's more than 10 or 20 percent. But in the next phase of the experiments, before we go to the 12 capacitors, we think that the neutrons and the carbon-11, those are going to be the only way. It's not such a bad disadvantage because it's an unequivocal measurement. There's no background because obviously there's no other source of neutrons other than the secondary reaction. We won't be, the mixing gas in the next phase of experiments is going to be pure hydrogen. So we won't have any deuterium in the machine. So we'll know if we get into neutrons, this is from a much larger number of fusion reactions. Does anybody have an answer to my question, which is, does anyone have a theoretical reason why uh, just heating the electrodes to such a modest temperature, 70 degrees centigrade, would have such a big change, repeatable change in the yield? Has anybody experimented with heated electrodes, um, like in industrial applications? Does anybody have any comment on that? Eric, yeah, sorry. I I, I, I remember um, uh, when you talk about this heating and the yield effect, uh, effect of this temperature on the yield. I remember this uh, Krishnan, Mahadevan Krishnan uh, from this Alameda Applied Sciences. He has, I think, a conference publication or maybe a paper 
which basically presents a data of about 15,000 shots in a low energy plasma focus device, I think a continuous operation, where they reported the increase in the temperature because these were uh, operated at a very high repetition rate. So there was a temperature rise of the electrode, the anode, to not only 70 degree, but I think it was few hundred degrees centigrade. And uh, he has uh, some, I, I forgot the results exactly, it was quite some time ago, uh, where he has discussed some, some effect of this uh, significant amount of electrode heating on the neutron yield. I think it was few hundred. So maybe you can try searching Google, you may find some reference from his work or you can contact him. He has done something on that. Do you recall whether he got an increase as well? No, they, they did not get increased. There was the other way around, deterioration. They, they got the deterioration in the neutron yield. Well, that's funny because, as I say, we got an increase. Now, of course, our temperature oh, okay. was much lower, so there may be a, you know, a peak in the curve. Uh -huh. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So there, were, there I remember his, the temperature. I remember he, he told me I had a separate discussion with him. was about 600. I think something like that, if I'm not wrong. I will try to find out whether I have a yeah. copy of his paper or not, because I'm sure he also sent me a, sent me the copy of that paper. Right. Okay, uh, Leopoldo. Yeah, I I I, I have do a co a comment. Uh, first, co congratulations for for your impressive uh, research and how you are every year increasing and increasing the 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 research because you are of the first that create a private company for fusion. You create your company maybe 15 years ago, where the, the, where probably were only five companies in fusion or probably less. And you... We were, you, we were the third company to... Uh, you were the first. Yes, third. congratulations. The third. The, the third, third company. First. Yeah. Congratulations. And now there is... 54 companies in the world. Right. So you are you are really a, a pioneer, and uh, I, I I I I I want to congratulate you. 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 Thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. Our videos come out of LPP Fusion's research in fusion energy, which will power a future with abundance for all, with a clean, sustainable economy and environment, goods, housing, and infrastructure would be extremely affordable once fusion kicks in. Fusion energy is the key to an advanced future. Support fusion research. The link's in the description. And thanks. Uh, I have to say, raising money from the general public is not easy because we, because we did not give up control. As far as I know, all but... There are only two private companies, including ourselves, that are controlled by the scientists. Everybody else sold control to the big investors, which I think is a very bad idea. But as a result, we don't have any big investors. We do have one institution who has been very loyal to us, which is the, uh, the Abel Foundation in Baltimore. But other than that, we've been raising money from the general public. Um, we now have 2,000 investors, but it is quite difficult because, uh, and my colleague and partner, Ivy Karamitsos, has been invaluable in this, but it's very difficult to be simultaneously a research entity and essentially a money-raising entity which has to put out informational, educational, and entertaining information to get the audience interested in investing. So I'm not saying this is an easy route, but it's the only route possible to us because the prejudice of the government in the United States against the TPF is unlimited. So we're not going to get any federal money. Uh, even pre-Trump, uh, it was you know, all I can say is it's institutional memory. So uh, this was the only route available to us. And it has sustained us. We are, we, our, our budget is about 700,000 a year.
which is in the United States is not much, but it is enough to keep us going. Did you also have a question, Leopoldo? Leopoldo, any question? Any other question? I'll ask my any... second question. Is anybody getting optical spectra from their DPF? Yeah, in, 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 in my group, we are, we are a, a, a starting to develop that diagnostic, but we are not too much experience yet. Well, it'll be interesting to, yes. to exchange them because, as I say, we've identified not everybody uses, obviously, uh, beryllium and boron. We've identified yes. those uh, lines, but the other lines should be common. I think the oxygen line is kind of unavoidable because no matter how hard you try, you can't get rid of oxygen totally. It pretty much saturates the environment. Um, but it will be interesting to see the comparison, especially of the hydrogen lines that everybody will get, hydrogen or deuterium lines. OK, any other questions? Uh, if not, then uh, I think we close for today. It has been a very good uh, experience to for uh, all of us to meet and share uh, our uh, uh, thoughts and progress and ideas. Okay, good Thanks night. Thanks for organizing. Bye. 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 Bye.